want to start with just a basic question, Mark. What happened? What went wrong? So this was a major breach of trust, and and I'm really sorry that this happened. Um, you know, we have a basic responsibility to protect people's data, and if we can't do that, then then we don't uh, deserve to have the opportunity to serve people. So our responsibility now is to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And there are a few basic things that I think we need to do to ensure that. One is uh, making sure that uh, developers uh, like uh, Alexander Kogan, who got access to a lot of information and then um, improperly used it, just don't get access to as much information going forward. So we are, are doing a set of things to, um, to restrict the amount of access that, that, um, that developers can get going forward. But the other is we need to make sure that there aren't uh, any other Cambridge Analytica is out there, right? Or folks who have improperly accessed data. So uh, we're going to go now and investigate every app uh, that has access to a large uh, amount of, of information from before we lock down uh, our platform. And if we detect any suspicious activity, we're going to do a full forensic audit. Facebook has asked us to share our data, to share our lives on this platform, and has wanted us to be transparent. And people don't feel like they've received that same amount of transparency. They're wondering what's happening to their data. Can they trust Facebook? Yeah, so one of the most important things that I think we need to do here is make sure that we tell everyone whose data was affected by one of these rogue apps. right? And, and we're going to do that. Uh, we're we're going to build a, a tool uh, where anyone can go and, and see if, if their data was a part of this. But so the 50 million people that were impacted, they will be able to tell if they were impacted by this? Uh, yeah, we're, and we're going to be even conservative on that. So you know, we, we may not have all of the data in our system today, so anyone whose data might have been affected by this, um, we're going we're gonna to make sure that we tell. And going forward, when we, I, when we identify um, apps that, uh, that, are, that are similarly doing sketchy things, um, we're going to make sure that we tell people then too, right? And that's definitely something that, you know, looking back on this, um, you know, I regret that we didn't do at the time, um, and I think we got that wrong, and we're we're committed to getting that right going forward. Like, I, I want to ask about that because when this came to light, you guys knew this uh, a long time ago that uh, that this data was out there. Why didn't you tell users? Don't you think users have the right to know that their data is being used for different purposes? So yes, and let, let me tell you what we what actions we took. So in 2015. Uh, some journalists from The Guardian told us that, that they uh, had, had seen or had some evidence that uh, data that this uh, app developer, Alexander Kogan, who built this personality quiz app and a bunch of people used it and shared data with it, um, had, had sold that data to Cambridge Analytica and a few other firms. And when we heard that, and that's against the policies, right? I mean, you, you can't share data in a way that, um, that uh, people don't, don't know or don't consent to. Um, we immediately banned Kogan's app. And, and further, uh, we made it so that Kogan and uh, Cambridge Analytica and the other folks who, with whom we shared the data, um, we asked for a, a formal certification that they had none of the data from anyone in the Facebook community, um, that they deleted it if they had it, and that they weren't using it. And, and they all provided that certification. So as, as far as, as we understood um, around the time of that episode, uh, there was no data uh, out, out there. So why um, didn't Facebook follow up? You know, you say you certified it. I think, uh, why wasn't there more of a follow-up? Why wasn't there an audit then? Why does it take a, a big media report to, to get that proactive approach? Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I, I was, I'm used to when people legally certify that they're going to do something, um, that they do it. But I think that this was clearly a mistake in retrospect. Was it putting right. too much trust in developers? I, I, I mean, I think it, it did. Um, and that's why you know, we need to make sure that we don't make that mistake ever again, which is why uh, one of the things that I announced today is that we're going to do a full investigation into every app that had access to a large amount of data um, from around this time before we locked down the platform. And, and we're now not just going to take people's word for it and, and when they give us a legal certification, but uh, if we see anything suspicious, which I think that there probably were signs um, in this case that, that we could have looked into, we're going to do a full forensic audit. How do you know there aren't hundreds more companies uh, like Cambridge Analytica that are also keeping data that violates Facebook's policies? Um, well, I think the question here is do our, our app developers, who, who people have given access to their data, are they doing something that people don't want? Are they selling the data in a way that people don't want? Um, are they giving it to someone that, that they don't have authorization to do? 
Um, and this is something that, that I think we now need to go figure out, right? So for all these apps. Uh, that's gotta be a hard, I gotta say, that's gonna be a really challenging uh, ordeal. How do you actually go do that? Because you talk about it being years ago and then you guys have made it a bit stricter for that mm -hmm. kind of information to be shared, but backtracking on it, it's gotta be really difficult to find out where that data has gone and who, what other companies have shady yeah. access. Yeah, I mean, so as you say, I mean, the, the, the good news here is that we already changed the platform policies in 2014. But before that, we know what the apps were that had access to data. Uh, we know um, how, how much, um, how many people were, were using those services. And we can look at the patterns of, of um, their data requests. And based on that, um, we, we think we'll have a, a pretty clear sense of, of whether anyone was doing anything abnormal. And we'll be able to do a full audit of anyone who is, is questionable. Do you expect, do you have any scale or any scope of what you expect to find? Anything in the scope of what happened with Cambridge Analytica where you had 50 million users? Um, well, it's hard to know what we'll find, but we're going to review thousands of apps. So uh, I, I, this is gonna be an intensive process, uh, but this is important. I mean, this is something that in retrospect, we clearly should have done. Uh, upfront with Cambridge Analytica. We should not have trusted the certification that they gave us. Um, and we're not gonna make that mistake again. I mean, this is our responsibility to, to our community um, is to make sure that, that we secure the data that, that they're. We're gonna get to uh, part two of Lori Siegel's interview in just a second. Before we do, I wanna bring in Lori, also CNN senior media correspondent, host of CNN's Reliable Sources, Brian Stelter with us, as well as the New York Times' is Matthew Rosenberg, who broke the story on Cambridge Analytica. An Analytica. Lori, I mean, what's your sense of how seriously Mark Zuckerberg is taking this, how concerned he is about the fallout for Facebook, not just for its users, but also obviously its reputation in Washington and, and on Wall Street? Uh, I mean, I think this is a really big deal. I'll tell you something, Anderson. He doesn't like to do press. He doesn't like to even go on camera. He even said as we were sitting there, you know, this is serious. I, I don't even like to do this. I, you know, he knows he has to. This is a huge... If you told me in 2004, when I was getting started with Facebook, that a big part of my responsibility today would be to help protect the integrity of elections against interference by other governments, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have really believed that that was going to be something that, that I would have to work on 14 years later. I'm going to challenge but, well, you. We're here now. I'm going to challenge you. Have you and done we're going to make sure that we do a good job at have it. Have you done a good enough job yet? Um, well, I, I think we will see. But, you know, I think what's clear is that in 2016, we were not as on top of a number of issues as we should have, whether it was Russian interference um, or fake news. But what we have seen since then is, you know, a number of months later, there was a major French election. And there we deployed some AI tools uh, that did a much better job of identifying um, Russian bots and, and basically Russian um, potential interference and, and weeding that out of the platform ahead of the election. And we were, we were much happier with how that went. In 2017, last year, uh, during a special election uh, in the Senate seat in Alabama, uh, we deployed some new AI tools that we built to detect uh, fake accounts that were trying to spread false news. And we, we found a lot of different uh, accounts coming from Macedonia. Uh, so, you know, I think the reality here is that this isn't rocket science, right? I mean, there's a lot of hard work that we need to do to make it harder for, for nation states like Russia uh, to do election interference, to make it so that trolls and other folks can't spread fake news. Um, but we can get in front of this. And, and we have a responsibility to do this um, not only for the 2018 midterms in the U.S., which are going to be a huge deal this year, and, and that's a, and just a huge focus of us, but there's a big election in India this year. There's a big election in Brazil. There are big elections around the world. And you can bet that we are really committed to doing everything that we need to to mm -hmm. make sure that the integrity of those elections on Facebook is, is secured. I can hear the commitment, but since I got you here, um, do you think that bad actors are using Facebook at this moment to meddle with the, with the U.S. midterm elections? Um, I'm sure someone's trying, right? And I'm sure that there's, um, you know, V2 of, of all, of version two of whatever um, the, the Russian effort was in 2016. I'm sure they're working on that and there are gonna be some new tactics that we need to make sure that we observe and, and get in front of. Do you know um, what the, is, speaking of getting in front of them, do you know what they are? Do you have any idea? Uh, I mean, yes, and, and I, I think we, we have some sense of, 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 a, of the different things that we need to get in front of. Are you specifically seeing bad actors try to meddle with the, the U.S. election now? Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what that means because I mean, right. it's not, 
I, I think yeah. the, the candidates are not. Are you seeing anything new or interesting? Well, what we see, what we see, are a lot of folks trying to sow division, right? right? So that was a, a major tactic um, that we saw Russia try to use in the 2016 election. Actually, most of what they did was not directly, um, as far as we can tell uh, um, from from the data on, uh, that, that that we've seen, was not directly about the election, but was more about just dividing people. And you know, so they'd run a group on, you know, for um, for pro-immigration reform, and then they'd run another group against immigration reform and just try to pit people against each other. And um, a lot of this was done with fake accounts that we can do a better job of tracing and using AI tools to be able to um, scan and, and observe a lot of what is going on. And I'm confident that we're going to do a much better job. Lawmakers in the mm -hmm. United States uh, and the UK are asking you to testify. Everybody wants you to show up. Um, will you testify before Congress? So the, the short answer is, is I'm happy to if it's the right thing to do. You know, Facebook testifies in Congress regularly on a number of topics, some high profile and some not. And our objective is always to provide Congress with this extremely important job uh, to have the most information that, that they can. Right? We see a small slice of activity um, on Facebook, but, if it, but Congress gets to you know, have, have access to the information across Facebook and all other companies and the intelligence community and everything. So what we try to do is send the person at Facebook um, who will have the most knowledge about what um, Congress is trying to learn. So if that's me, then I am happy to go. Um, what, what I think we found so far is that typically there are people whose whole job um, is focused on an area, but I would imagine at some point that, um, that there will be a topic where I am the sole authority on and it will make sense for me to do it. And I'd Although be happy to do it at that point. You are the brand of Facebook. You are the name of Facebook. People want to hear from you. And that's why I'm doing this interview. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think that there's the question in, in, a, in a question of congressional testimony is what is the goal, right? And that's not a media opportunity, right? Or at least it's not supposed to be. Uh, the goal there, I think, is to get Congress all the information that they need to do their extremely important job. And we just want to make sure that we send whoever is best informed at doing that. I agree separately that, um, that there's an element of accountability where um, I should be out there doing more interviews. And you know, as uncomfortable as it is for me to do uh, you know, a TV interview, it's, um, I think that this is an important thing that as, as a discipline for what we're doing, I, I, I should be out there and being, being asked uh, hard questions by, by journalists. Knowing what you know now, do you believe Facebook impacted the results of the 2016 election? Oh, that's, that is hard. Um, you know, I think that it is, it's really hard for me to, to have a full assessment of that. You know, it's the, the reality right. is, well, there were so many different forces at play, right? The, the organic posting that people did, the get out the vote campaigns that we ran, the pages that, that both candidates ran, the advertising that they did. I'm sure that all of that activity had some impact. Um, it's hard for me to assess how much that stacked up compared to um, all of the campaign events and advertising that was done off of Facebook and, and all the other efforts. Um, and I think it's also a, um, hard to, to fully assess the impact of that, that organic activity, which we're actually quite proud of, right? But that, also the bad actors And, and the bad stuff, that's you know, what I I'm think saying. That, yeah. yeah, so I, I think it is, it's, it's hard to fully assess. Given the stakes here, why shouldn't Facebook be regulated? Um, I, I actually am not sure we shouldn't be regulated. Um, you know, I think in general, technology is an increasing, um, increasingly important trend in, in the world. And I actually think the question is more, what is the right regulation rather than yes or no, should it be regulated? What's the right regulation? Um, well, there's some, some basic things that I think that there are some big intellectual debates on, on the, the basic side, you know, there are things like ads transparency regulation that, that I would love to see, right? If you look at you know, how much regulation there is around advertising on TV and print. Um, you know, it's just not clear why there should be less on the internet, right? You should have the same level of transparency required. And you know, I don't know if a bill is gonna pass. I know a, a couple of senators are, are working really hard on this, um, but we're committed and we've actually already started rolling out ad transparency tools that accomplish most of the things that are in all the bills that um, that people are, are talking about today. Because we, we just think that this is an important thing. People should know um, who is buying the ads uh, that they see on Facebook. And you should be able to go to any page and see all the ads that people are running to different audiences. How has being a father changed um, changed your commitment to users, changed your commitment mm -hmm. to their future and, and what a kinder Facebook looks like? 
Well, I think having kids changes a lot. And like what? Well, you know, I used to think that the, the most important thing to me by far was, uh, you know, my having the greatest positive impact across the world that I can. And now, um, you know, I really just care about building something that my, my girls are going to grow up and be proud of me for. And I mean, that's what, what is kind of my guiding philosophy at this point is, you know, when I you know, come and work on a lot of hard things during the day and I go home and just ask, will my girls be proud of what I did today?